Right, so here we are, I'm just um, hooking up the high pressure feeds now to the two turbos. So I'm going to be using the same two hoses that I made on the last engine. So the ones we made up ourselves with the AN fittings. The only thing I had to get was a just an adapter for the the other VNT there. Because I, I did have one, but that seemed to have lost it. It'll be here somewhere in the box, but for what a new one cost, it was quicker to buy a new one than it was to find the old one. So, it's just up to an AN4 out the back of the uh, VNT, which is an M10 by one. Um, they all have those things, well most of the small frame Garrett turbos do anyway. So that'll then screw into the turbo. If we can do that with left hand here, I've got the wrong hand on the bloody camera as normal. Oh, there she is. So I'll thread in there like so. And then we got up to an AN4, so you can go with it whatever you like really from then. Um, this is the hose I made last time, it'll work out again, so that'll come on there loop down and down around underneath um, and then come up past join onto that one as well and then the two just get their feed from down on the sandwich plate on the front of the motor um, because that's coming from before the filter I have actually then got little inline filters in these hoses just to protect the turbos but um, that's really basically that the other turbo hooks up as before with the hose we made last time because that hasn't changed you also see I've just got the uh, actuator mounted on the VNT now, um, so that's a factory um, electric style turbo actuator that's actually bolted on as it would have been originally using the original bolt holes. It's kind of worked out quite well in the orientation of the cold side that I haven't actually had to move it. So that virtually bolts right on. The only thing I've just had to do is um, just cut some of the housing off because it would uh, interfere with the external gate over here. But aside from that, that bolts right on and I'm quite happy with that. Right, uh, another little job I need to do now before I fit these pipes sort of in their final position. So I've got some sensors and stuff we need to locate in various pipes, so I'm going to do that now. So this is the intake pipe that comes up to the manifold for after the intercooler. So you see I've got two marks there. When I had it in situ I marked two places where they would be uh, out the way of everything else. Um, so there's going to be a temperature sensor uh, going in there, and obviously also the main map sensor for the actual final charge pressure coming into the engine will be mounted next to it there. Um, so what we'll be doing here is basically just cutting off two pieces of stainless. Um, so I've just got a piece of stainless bar in the uh, in the vise there. Just cut off two squares. Uh, I'll weld that onto the side of the pipe, and I'll then drill right through the whole lot and tap that. It's just a better way of doing it. If you you'll find if you just tap this piece, it works okay. But if you ever have to take the sensor out or or sort of do anything with it, you'll bug up the threads because this is so thin. You can't really get a thread of such. It's just like a one a one thread and it will go in and it will work but it's not an ideal way of doing it. It ends up being loose and then you have it leaking and it's just a real pain in the neck. So it's better to try and thicken it up and do it properly, particularly if you're using aluminium pipes because you'll just strip them out straight away. Um, these are stainless, hence why I've got just a piece of stainless to weld in there. Right, so I've just welded those two plates on there now, so we'll take it over to the pillar drill now and uh, bore the two holes. So I've just uh, tapped out those two holes on that intake pipe now so you can just see we've got the uh, air temperature sensor there at the front and then the map sensor at the back and which is the Tronics um, sensor just to give us a bit more range rather than using a conventional sort of stock map sensor which is only about 3 bar um, so that one will give us plenty of range uh, 75 psi I think it's rated for not 5 volt so that should be good for a minute so we're going to do something very similar to this now uh, on the little piece of pipe between the two turbos so I can monitor the temperature and the pressure obviously there as well. Um, obviously the, the pressure monitoring electrically is for the ECU uh, so we can manage the two turbos to sort of keep things where I need them to be. Um, and there also will actually be a conventional uh, fitting fitted both places just for mechanical boost gauges. Um, sort of not necessary because obviously we can monitor it all sort of on the computer now but for a minute we're going to retain the gauges just because it's kind of second nature to me to glance at them so I trust them at the moment. Right uh, that's got the fuel system pretty much tied up so I just put those last few fittings on there now so you can see the fuel pump and the filter there and um, then the lines come down and around and then they're um, bolted up to the car up to the front where you've already seen. Okay, so just moving on with a little bit more of the uh, pipe work on the air system now. So I just want to connect the two turbos together with the uh, cross pipe here. So rather than just having a hose going straight from the air compressor into the inlet of the other one this time, I'm going to have a couple sensors there so we can monitor the same as the other pipe we did earlier basically. Uh, so we measure air temp, uh, we'll take a feed there for the, or A, the boost gauge, uh, B, another map sensor, and C, the obviously a feed for the boost control on the external gate. 
Um, so I've just got a small piece of stainless steel device here now. So I'm just in the process of welding on some um, pieces of stainless to drill, drill and tap for those sensors. Um, like I said before, it's better to have a bit of extra thickness rather than trying to actually tap the, the tube itself because you'll find you'll just strip that out. So I'll stick you up on the tripod in a minute and we'll weld a couple more of those on. Right, I uh, just got that little piece bolted in there now, or clamped in should I say. So you can see you've got the three sensors there, one for the map sensor, one for the boost control and the air temp sensor there as well. Um, so that's all clamped up ready. Forgot to mention as well, uh, just bolted up the oil cooler in front of the radiator there. Um, that's pretty much as it was before, I haven't changed anything there. So I don't know if this is going to be the end of the video or the start of another one, but it looks like pretty mechanically now we are pretty much all together. Um, it's really now electrical to do. So the fuel system is finished, the cooling system is finished, um, sort of all the turbo and intercooling pipe work is all finished and I've got all of these sensors and everything mounted where they need to be. I got the oil cooler fitted there yesterday, you probably saw earlier in the video. Uh, the intercooler is all plumbed up. So really sort of in terms of mechanics and stuff on the front end for a minute it's kind of almost there.